So guys, this is Michael Summers uh, from San Diego, and he has the Zen Earth Chronicles. And hopefully the wind isn't going to take this right on down. All right. <laughs> hey, how are y'all doing? Um, I just want to start by saying thank you for the opportunity. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you. I, um, I'm uh, yeah, pitching for the Zen. Sorry about that. I'm uh, here to present for the Zen Earth Chronicles. It's a uh, fantasy story. Um, it's a fantasy story that follows the exploits of, and that's just not going to work. <laughs> that follows the. We don't need to see it. Put it right here. All right. Follows the exploits of this as the main character. He's named. Uh, his name is Tyrik, and he's a sorcerer who has. Uh, traded his soul in exchange for power and agelessness, so he'll never die of natural causes. But after uh, thousands of years, he's completely bored with life now, suffers from overwhelming on way, but is terrified of death because he knows that he's going to go to hell when he dies. So it's, uh, it's a story about the choices that he has to make, um, deciding where, where morality lies and what, what decisions that he can make in order to uh, to continue, or what is the purpose of his existence? If he knows that he's going to hell, what is the uh, benefit of meritous acts? Why bother with benevolence or kindness? And uh, each of the characters in the world is a fully developed character, which I obviously don't have time to go into. Um, and the interaction between these characters, each of them has their own backstory and uh, their own motivations. It's the interaction between these characters that really draws the reader into the story. Likewise, I've tried to develop a fully, uh, a fully fleshed out world with, uh, it's got its own histories, maps, things that aren't really necessary for the reader to have completely presented to them, but things that, when referenced subtly, help to draw the reader in. What are the stakes of the world that are, these characters exist within? The stakes of the world? It's uh, hopefully like all good, uh, all great fantasy represents or reflects our own world. It's not just something that's Anybody can create an imaginary world of dragons, unicorns, etc. I tried to create a world where it reflects our own world, uh, the, way, uh, the way people have to make decisions without absolutes. There's no way of knowing what, what else is out there, what else is going on in the world, what happens in the afterlife for sure. So it's, uh, it's a story about these people trying to exist. Do his decisions affect everything around him, our reality around him? Um, He's powerful enough to where, in the past, he's ruled kingdoms, but he's grown so bored with it that now he lives pretty much as a wandering hermit. And that's kind of the key, que key question for me is, so what if this guy's bored? How is that going to affect my life as the reader? You know, I was like, what, well, what does it mean to me? I think that everybody has made decisions in the past that they seriously regret, at least one. This may be an extreme example, but I think he's a likable enough and identifiable enough character to where you can, you can appreciate the angst of his situation, and I think the readers will be interested to see how his story progresses and how he develops, and how he kind of refines his humanity um, after having been so alienated from the rest of mankind for such an extended amount of time. Does he end up going back to save someone? Um, actually, the story starts with uh, a spell book that he has has been stolen, and his motivation is to find it for purely selfish reasons. It's powerful, and he wants to stay alive. And why is it that he, what does he ultimately do with it? Um, he's performed rituals at different times to uh, summon new powers, to summon uh, infernal aid or various things uh, at times of great need, um, which is what for him, so purely selfish reasons in the past. But along the way, he's going to encounter these other characters. And, uh, and as he starts re-interacting with humanity and sort of refinding his place in the world, he'll start to, uh, start to appreciate the value of human companionship. Yes. Let me say, Michael, uh, you look fabulous. And I am much more interested in you than I am this idea. Uh, this idea kind of bores me. You interest me. It is, it's hard for us to connect with what you're telling us because it's a bit sketchy and I'm not sure of the world and I'm still kind of not sure of the characters and the stakes for the character, the cast of characters that he interacts with. 
and the world. So it's very hard for me to grasp on to, to, what, to what the idea is. A, a suggestion of pitching later on is it's a story of a guy who, and, and make sure that he if he is going to have an arc, he should go from selfish to unselfish. We all, I, we all know Frodo's arc. We all know his, right. Frodo's mission. You can tell Frodo's mission in one sentence. And you you know, do, that's, that's kind of what you need to do here. And you do have a good look, which actually helps, believe it or not. Even if someone doesn't see you, you, you do have a presence, and I think that this may not be it, although I do like the fact that you put our logo on it. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good detail. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, great Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you.